Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world and to seek the forgiveness of our sins by the power of the Holy Spirit, we may give ourselves to the service of God. We spend a moment quietly reflecting on the work we've gone past. Jesus says, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed be the Lord, for he has heard the voice of our prayer. Therefore shall our hearts dance for joy, and in our song we will praise our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord our God, creator and redeemer of all. To you be glory and praise forever. From the waters of chaos you drew forth the world, and in your great love fashioned us in your image. Now through the deep waters of death you have brought your people to new birth by rising your Son to life in triumph. May Christ your light ever dawn in our hearts as we offer you our sacrifice of thanks and praise Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. We hear our gospel reading. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, The kingdom of heaven is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and intruded his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. One, the one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had two talents made two more talents. But the one who received one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with him. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed me over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed me over two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in few things. 
I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward saying, Master, I knew you were a harsh man. Repeat when you did not sow, and gathering when you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave, you, you knew, did you, that I reap when I did not sow, and gather when I did not scatter? And then you ought to have infested my money with the bankers, and on my return, I would have received what was mine on my own interest. So take the talent from him, so take the talent from him and give it to one of the ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an ab abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the utter darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The problem with the parable of the talents is it doesn't seem fair. The person who started off with the least ends up with nothing at all, and the one who starts off with the privileges ends up with even more. Many of Jesus' parables turn the tables. The sinner ends up being the one justified because of his humility. God shows as much generosity to the one who's worked one hour as ten hours. The younger disobedient son gets a party thrown for him when he gets home. The one who helps the man on the road turns out to be a distrusted foreigner. But all of these parables seem to advocate a radical inclusion and generosity, whereas the parable of the talents just seems a bit mean. And indeed, it's not, much very, it's not really possible to make very much theological sense of it until we remember one key thing. It's not a competition. Human beings are intrinsically competitive. Just watch siblings playing, rivaling for attention. Just watch how people behave when ambition becomes their overriding preoccupation. Just notice how each one of us in our daily lives has a tendency to compare ourselves with others and come up with the conclusion that we're either much better or much worse than they are. Our most well-loved television programmes are based on competition. What would November be like, especially this year, without Bake Off and Strictly to cheer us on our way? And yet, as the weeks go on, we feel rather sad to see some of our favourites get whittled down until finally just one victor remains. Thankfully, that is not how God works. It is not a competition. And in theory, all three of the figures who were given their talents at the beginning of the story could go away with more than they started with in the end. But because we are so used to everything being a competition, when we read the parable of the talents, we think that's a competition too. The landowner goes away, he leaves three servants in charge, and the one who makes the least money, just like on The Apprentice, gets fired. He's the weakest link, so he has to go. And I think this is a very dangerous reading of the text, because I really don't think that God is very much like Alan Sugar or Craig Revel Hall or Paul Hollywood. And this is why. The master gives each one of his servants a specific amount to take care of, depending, Jesus says, and it's really important that we hear this, on their ability to be able to cope. He's not 
doing it because of any inherent unfairness, which is sometimes how we read it. He's not giving them different numbers of talents because he's picking on some of them or because he likes some more than others, but because he's got a pretty good idea of what they can manage. So all the servants, just like us, are given a certain amount of responsibility and they're all expected to do their best. He expects them to do their best because he expects them to respect him and because it's the right thing to do. As we know, two servants do do the best they can and the other puts his talent in a hole in the ground and ignores it. And he tells the landowner when he returns that it's because he was scared of failing that he does not does nothing with it. And the landowner doesn't buy that for a minute. What's the point of having a talent that you don't use? When he gives the coin back, shiny and new to its owner, his master is obviously disappointed and says, you might as well have lost your talent actually, and he makes the point by giving it away to one of the others. We don't know the real reason that this servant hid it in the ground rather than even put it in a bank account. Perhaps he just couldn't be bothered. It wasn't a responsibility he wanted. Perhaps there was something more interesting he wanted to do. Perhaps he already had a grudge against his master and it was a sort of passive aggressive way of showing that he didn't have to do what was expected of him if he didn't want to. I think this parable speaks of Jesus' frustration with some of the people who are dithering about whether or not to follow him or who only want to follow him on their own terms. But I think we can see that the parable is not as scary or unfair as it might appear at first sight. We might think that we are like a servant with just one talent, not up to much really. But God still trusts us, offers us life and growth, still trusts that we have potential. It doesn't matter if we don't feel very clever or gifted. If we compare ourselves with others, we can always find ourselves, find people who are more successful or popular or clever. God asks us to work with what we have whether that's one, ten, or a hundred talents. He asks us to think, what can I do with the gifts that God has given me? What is he calling me to? What am I good at that I can use to further the kingdom of God? What do I possess that I can offer him to use as he sees fit? The problem with the servant with one talent in the story wasn't that he only had one talent. It was that he didn't engage with it at all. He acted as if his talent didn't even exist. And Jesus is saying that the Christian faith is an effort. Life, living life well, does take determination and persistence. As we have often said, following Jesus does not make all your problems go away. But it offers hope and meaning and encouragement to live a good life and make the most of the gifts that we have for the good of the world. Jesus said, says to those who follow him, I am going to die for this. Some of you will die too. Others will be ridiculed or persecuted, disbelieved and thought to be entirely foolish. This is a costly way of life, but if you live it, you will find your true selves and you will discover talents that you never knew you had. We have more talents than we realise. I suspect that we can do more good than we realise. God has given you gifts. He has noticed the work that you have done for him. And he promises that the more you live your life for him, 
the more you will receive. The servant with one talent asks, why should I? I don't suppose I will be appreciated. Why didn't he give me more talents to start with? The other servants say, here I am, Lord. And they are rewarded for their love and faithfulness. Lord, hear our 
those who suffer in body, mind and spirit, especially those who we know who are in hospital, waiting for hospital appointments or con convalescing at home. We pray for all residents of our care homes and all who are struggling to manage at home. Help them to trust in your faithfulness and your presence with them in times of darkness. And by your loving will, bring them light and comfort. Gathering in our prayers and praises into one, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.